I got right. to sound it was a unique. I gotta, I, I'm sorry to correct you, but I'm just in that mood tonight. Yet. <laughs> well, we've got we got some cool stuff to get to um, here in just a minute. We've got a uh, friend of the friend of ours, friend of the club, friend of the show, uh, John McClellan, um, who I personally know from. Uh, 1989. I started uh, the second week of 89, and John started two weeks after I did in Dayton, Ohio, at Joker's Comedy Club. So you personally uh, know John? I know from John McCall, and John uh, was just competing in the San Francisco Comedy Competition, got to the finals. He already won the uh, Seattle competition maybe 10 years, 12 years ago. Uh, the year after Hedberg won, he won. Do you not believe in building suspense? You're just like going Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't win the fucking competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ruined it for him. Oh, God a, damn it. He's a mustard in the dining room with the wrench. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just... No, Never no, watch a goddamn movie with Chris. How many I'm people talking. are hanging on to their fucking feet <laughs> out there? How many, especially in Japan? So Japanese people were like, <laughs> oh, um, my, that's my question. You know, I, there goes my question list all right there. You know, I got all the answers. I was now, I've got some very, uh, very pertinent questions from Mr. McClellan, who is a... Uh, who has headlined uh, this club, of course, uh, before? He has. Very funny guy. Uh, one of those he wants guys. To come back. I would describe as bulletproof, as far as you know, in front of any audience, sure. regardless of what oh, it but is. He's a monster, though. He gets on stage. He's a fucking monster. He's a bulletproof. He's a real deal. He's bulletproof. A real deal. And not many people are bulletproof. Uh, I am not bulletproof. Who's he? Uh, who's he competing against? Uh, uh, the he was. Uh, uh, he. He was competing against people who beat him. <laughs> Evidently, I'm just kidding. You know, he he was in the top five and he got in the final five. And five. I, it's it's got to be good. Right? And, yeah, I'd be good. I'd like forty. Yeah, number four. I'd like forty comics. Yeah. And so to be completely honest with possible. you, number four at San Francisco is fucking huge. I mean, that's really a big deal. Sure, it is. John is. Yeah, you know, the kid might make it back here in Mason City after getting four. <laughs> I mean, that's what ha- you have to do. You have to go to Frisco and get four. <laughs> get back to Mason City. I, I, I don't make the Rules. That's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's stepping stone. Yeah. Bigger and better. Yeah. Bigger and better. Yeah. You need to wait until we got him on the phone to say that stuff. Yeah, yeah, Nick Griffin wasn't here until he was on his like fifth Letterman. That's all I'm saying. Four Lettermans and he was like, "Fuck Nick Griffin, number five. Okay, okay, come on, Nick, come on over, man. That's awesome." So we're going to have John McCollin on the program tonight. We're going to call him just and, a second. And, and there's a little controversy on the uh, – and controversy is something I made up, by the way. His Facebook handle is not John McCollin. It's John MC. It is, but we don't know why. We'll ask him when we well, get him on the phone. It's it's just, I mean, he's Scottish. He's Scottish. Yeah, yeah, I know it's Mason City and all, but you've got to talk to Mabel. Mabel, Mabel, get me Mr. McClellan. <laughs> what are, are you dying? five four nine. I'll handle it. Okay. Okay. But well, you keep talking about this. And, and but we, we got other people here, too, and we need to tell people that we've got other people so here, too. Around. You want to tell them that we've we, got we, other we people? We have a band that is a phenomenal mole. I can't say that word. Phenomenal. 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 We have a phenomenal band here tonight. Phenomenal. <laughs> Greg Ward and the Power Station. Now, uh, now the whole Power Station's not here, Greg. No, the Powerhouse. No, Sean, Ward, Sean Ward and the Powerhouse. And it's Sean. It's Sean's not Greg. It's Sean Ward. It's just me and the drummer right now. The other guys are going to be coming in. Uh, they're on the road right now. Well, actually, all at home visiting. They're going to be in tomorrow night. So Sean, you, you just got off the road? Yes. From yes. what gigs? Where, what cities were you in? Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. We went to Dayton, Ohio. We've oh, my hometown is Dayton, Ohio. What, 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 what gig did you do in Dayton, Ohio? Uh, well, we did a couple little clubs. Uh, we did one called the Slipper Club over there. And then we did one called, uh, what the one was that one there? That was, uh... And Cincinnati, Ohio, of yeah, course. Yeah, Dayton. Dayton, there was a couple clubs. There was like, uh... Uh, we got. We do so many things. It's so confusing. <laughs> There's a mic closer that you can move, and you're like, yeah, speak so into this crazy. one. Uh, anyway, Just turn, uh, yeah. turn that mic a little bit. Okay, yeah, we did. Uh, we did the. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> can I hear you? <laughs> Blues and Barbecue uh, Festival. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, the Peoria Riverfront festivals, uh, blues festivals. Uh, Florida, Beaumont, Texas, uh, wow. Arkansas, uh, and we do have a string of gigs. Uh, we're just kind of waiting on to make sure everything kind of works out with this, but uh, hopefully in California. Well, the, bit, the, the next big gig is uh, tomorrow night. Yes. <laughs> this is really going to rock it right here. In Mason, Mason City, City Limits. Limits. In fact, uh, we'll even unlock the front door for this gig. Hey, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I like tonight. 
we will all lock the front door, and yeah. just five bucks will get you. All the money goes to the band yeah. uh, for gas money. And um, yeah. no, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody uh, do that again. We uh, love to have live music here at the club. And um, you guys do uh, original music as well as uh, cover tunes. Yeah. And uh, yes, how, how many uh, discs do, or albums do you have out? Uh, right now, we have two CDs. Uh, you don't have any albums, but you have two yeah, CDs. That's how old I am. Yeah, yeah. 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 You got some real to real in the basement that we might. That's how old I am. Definitely make your name as the one song on iTunes. Yeah, exactly. What? So. Uh, wait, look up, wait, go wait. to Facebook and look up uh, Sean Ward and the Okay, I'll repeat the iTunes uh, again. The, the the name of the song? Uh, uh, it, it was a joke. No, we don't know. Okay, we don't know. I don't know. I have a question for the band. Yeah. Did you get fourth in the San Francisco comedy competition? <laughs> <laughs> no? Then shut the fuck up. Because we have the number four <laughs> winner. Is yeah, he with us right now? No, but I'm going to call him. So what, 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 Everybody's actually going to hear this room. Oh, I hear, the first question is, of course, we have, uh, what, uh, gold, silver, and bronze. What is fourth place? <laughs> That's a fair question to ask. Uh, okay. Keep on a stick. Okay. No, just leave him there. Just leave him there, Chris. Leave him there. Hey, John McCollin, guess who's calling? It's the Gone Rogue Radio Idiots. Hey, plus Chris Fire. Hey, hey, plus Chris Fire. Yeah, I'm the genius of the group. Yeah. <laughs> John McClellan is here on the phone, and John McClellan just uh, participated in the um, San Francisco comedy competition. And, uh, hey, by the way, Chris, I'd like to thank you for jinxing, jinxing me in the years. <laughs> I would have won the competition if you didn't. I'm on the air. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> I was, um, well, you're welcome very much. I'm going to do my best. Well, John, I, I, to me, I, I mean, that's a very good thing. You're, a, you're kind of an East Coast guy now, and you go to the West Coast, and you get to the finals. I mean, and there's a, a bit of a difference between the um, the people you hang out with and these people that you were trying to make laugh. Oh, my God. Is there a difference? <laughs> the biggest difference is, you know, listen, Chris, you've known me a long time. You know, and I, I, we, we all bust chops, but... You ask somebody what time it is out here, and they start you know, tearing up. Uh, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I, just, I really need to know when the bus shows up. I, I, I don't know why you're crying right now. <laughs> no crying in comedy. Yeah. Well, this is not comedy. This is just, uh, you know, East Coast, West Coast. Yes. The, the biggest difference, I, 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 I've said this for years, I was in Portland, Oregon, and they had a sign on the bank that says, please do not wear the Halloween masks in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Where I live, they have a guy with a gun, all right, but apparently we're just going to put a sign up to stop the robbery. <laughs> and it says, please, please. please. <laughs> Be courteous yeah, while robbing the, this establishment. It's a little open toad out here, man, so... Well, uh, well John, I, I, John, what motivated you to get into the whole San Francisco com- comedy competition? I know, again, uh, John was in the Seattle comedy competition. What year was that, John? Um, <laughs> it was the year after no, Hedberg please. won, and then John <laughs> McClellan <laughs> won. The year before. The year before. The year before. Are you okay with yeah. the fact that Chris is going way off the script I gave you? Is that fine with you? Just I didn't know he had a script. I'm sorry. Actually, what page is this? <laughs> That eye thing, it just wanders, man. <laughs> Dude, I know. This is the radio, and that wow. won't work nobody, on radio. Nobody can no. see the eye. <laughs> no, I, 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 I will address this now, because Derek did ask me to tell this story. Uh, the, the year after I won a Seattle comedy competition was a year that Mitch Hedberg won, and I hosted the finals. Uh, and it was pretty much a two-man race between him and Augie Smith, who Augie's very funny. Yes, yes. So, we're, we're doing a show out in, in eastern Washington, like way out, like four hours from Seattle and Augie Smith in the finals of the competition you get 15 to 20 minutes to do your performance Augie Smith went up and did about 16, 17 minutes of absolutely brutal comedy destroyed the place people were standing up <laughs> it was, I, I couldn't believe it we are all sitting in the back going oh my god you know, you'll never see this again as long as you live and then Mitch has to follow him 
And Rich was a very low key guy, but he just goes up and the first things out of his mouth was, you motherfuckers are gonna stand for me too. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funnier than real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get this, you get this whippy up there telling him, you know, okay, we're going Nazi now. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty remarkable. Yeah, that's a good And time. then he did. He totally, he, poor Augie had to stand there and watch basically the best set of his life to that point be systematically dismantled by the guy who just, some stoner who'd walked up there on stage. <laughs> well, you know, and, and Augie's defense, Augie's kind of a stoner too. So, <laughs> well, you, you know, I don't want, I want to point that you know, out. That, that's the romantic side of that story. <laughs> the, story. <laughs> the, the romance of it. Put the prize money. So Augie's like, what? Are you doing the uh, interview uh, in, a, in a tunnel? Where are you at? In an elevator? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in a liquor store. I'm, uh, <laughs> Say no more. Yeah, there's a little bit of commotion, you know, because I'm waving a gun around. Yeah, right. Perfect. 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 John, are you uh, East Coast or West Coast right now? Are you back from Frisco? No, I'm, uh, I'm still out in California. Uh, tell me about uh, the, the show. Uh, we got you, uh, we, we kind of contacted the, the Mark Pitta thing on Tuesday night. You got on the, uh, in Mill Valley, right? You got on the show, and then yeah, what yeah, happened? I heard about the story. It's an amazing story. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, this guy Mark Pitta runs a show on uh, Tuesday night, Marin County, which is just north of, of San Francisco, and he's got some real top quality entertainment on it. For example, the guy that is Conan's head rider was on the show. So, uh, Dr. Gonzo, who is a friend of the Run Run Radio Show in Mesa City Limits, um, put some tricks for me, got me on the go. And, uh, so the, it, Mark comes out and introduced me. He's, no, I don't know this guy, but Gonzo recommended it. He said, he's not funny, blame Gonzo. And I come out, I, I first joke, and a light explodes, and then starts to smoke and fire, and everyone's running out of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, so I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> so I called Gonzo after the show. He goes, "How's it going? How's it going?" I told him. I said, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, the, a light explode. I told him, you know how he, you know, Mark said, you know, if this guy's not funny, blame Gonzo. And then a light exploded. So uh, the show went. Oh, we get the bill for the light. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, people have, have uh, uh, been very nice to me. I got on a, a show last night, the Poncho Line, and uh, I've got uh, another show uh, coming up tomorrow night. Even though I wasn't supposed to be here, I was able to uh, get something together. Just, you know, it, it, it's actually nice watching a show and not rooting against somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah for, the last, for the last few weeks, I've just been, I've been doing my show, and then I just, Who's funny, who's not funny. 
the first night I'm on 15th out of 16 at a gay Hispanic nightclub in Oakland, California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I'm already on the phone with the plane. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, you know, I'll just leave tomorrow. Let's just get the plane around here. <laughs> so there's no light on the stage. Once again, gay Hispanic nightclub, Oakland, California, no light. <laughs> I come in second. <laughs> second night, weird theater space, downtown San Francisco. There's no mic. No I mic. come in third. <laughs> Next night, Jewish Community Center, legitimate theater, wine and food backstage. Sound is perfect. Light. Oh, uh, no, there you are again. We totally lost you. Yeah. Okay. Where, where did I drop off? Uh, well, when you're having the. When you introduced in, yourself. I'm no, sorry. No, no, cheese and no, wine. No. Cheese and wine. <laughs> no, we, we got that part the first time. You're. Past that. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the, the, the kids in Japan love that kind of stuff. The, uh, <laughs> so the cheese and wine backstage. Go ahead. We, you had us all hanging on the end of our chairs. And wine and beer backstage. The sound was perfect. The lights were perfect. The audience is full. It's a great show, and I don't make the top five. So the message here is... I, I, I need to be in a fucked up situation <laughs> <laughs> to really excel at what I do. Here. Speaking, of that, company. speaking of that, John. Yeah, you, uh, the, uh, next uh, night, the next night, I mean, it's a bar gig on a Sunday night in Santa Cruz where people are throwing beers at each other. <laughs> and I come in second again. <laughs> Chaos, you you're like behind the fence. Friend yeah. of the chaos. Yeah, comedy chaos. Ken, I, I was I was telling these guys how we uh, we started together. Uh, uh, I started in uh, the second week of '89, and then Rob Lindemann was the the week after me, and then you were the week after that, the fourth week of '89. And um, I remember specifically uh, we had did these comedy competitions. Remember those? And yes. <clears throat> I think the the big win uh, of this would have been to open up for Mark McCullum, the Kill the Wabbit guy. But I remember yeah. specifically, you were dating several women in the finals of the competition. Yeah. They all yeah. showed up at the same up. time. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up while they're all probably listening. Right? <laughs> That's really nice. I had to kind of cover for you on that, but I mean, you had like three women all come up to the same show because you were in the finals. And I remember yeah, I after your really I learned a very hard comedy lesson that night because I invited all three of these girls to come to the show. Hard <laughs> comedy lesson, lesson that ain't funny. <laughs> no. The, the hard comedy lesson is don't do bringer shows. <laughs> wow. Hard lesson you learned. You take a minute to write that down. <laughs> Amazing stuff, funny stuff. Yeah, I, I, I have some jokes every once in a while. <laughs> and that comes in common your line of work, I hear. Well, I, I think part of my charm, if there is any, uh, <laughs> is that ability to be that, that the line where some people don't know if I'm serious or not. <laughs> and, um, and, and this came up during the competition, during the, the, the semifinals week, which was a very grueling week. And it was really weird. But I'm in a competition, so I want to hate everyone. It gives me an edge. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I just, I don't want to like you. Sure. And everybody there was very nice and very cool. And we're all friends now, which is odd. Uh, but we did show in a casino out by... Uh, Yosemite. We were like way out there. It was like sleeveless shirts and, and trucks, that kind of a. Uh, so I like working in Mason City, really. Sure. And, sure. <laughs> so everybody's going up and just eating a wheel of cheese. Just nothing. <laughs> just, just staring at There was a gay guy in a competition. He goes up and he's like, hey, how's everybody doing? And you could hear it plain as day from the back of the room. The guy goes, 
Ah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> talk about that that's probably a pretty good segue into uh something that i messaged you about you had a uh-huh. you had sort of an interesting tv experience why don't you talk about that for a second i was on, i was on a show called millionaire matchmaker now if, if, if people listen to the show to, does not know what this show is it's, it's a reality show it's a dating show uh essentially it's uh uh, people with, with, with a lot of money, millions of dollars, that need help uh, finding a date. Essentially, it's everybody that's been told, I wouldn't fuck you if you had a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they went out and got the money to call their bluff. <laughs> so, a, a friend of mine recommended me to this producer for the, for the show, and I didn't know what I was getting into. Like, okay, well, you want to submit for a reality show? And I'm like, sure. Cause I, and I really wanted it to be a cooking show, because the cooking shows are such bullshit. Like, yes, chef, no chef. No, no, that, if you ever worked in a kitchen, there's no yes, chef, and no chef. It's guys waving knives and screaming in Spanish. <laughs> so I wanted to bring a little reality to the cooking show. At any point in time during this little spiel that you had going on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back to the scripted material I have. You <laughs> okay, you're on the Millionaire Matchmaker, right? And you, uh, you're Listen, in that whole guys, process. Guys, don't have that option here. What was that, Chris? I'm sorry? You're in the Millionaire Matchmaker and the whole process of getting selected to be on the show. That's where it was, you... It was, it, it was a little 
nutty, you know, because, you know, I submitted a videotape of mine and uh, emotional materials, and they're like, we like you, we'd like you to come do the show, you're familiar with the show Millionaire Matchmaker, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course I will. <laughs> never seen it before in my life, you know, so I had to... The, you know, reach out and, and get some some yeah. advice for people. You know, to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, you first you get a second job and try to make some extra money <laughs> and get to that millionaire threshold, right? <laughs> well, it, it, the first thing you had to do because it was all comics, all right? And <laughs> there was probably about fifteen or twenty comics, and we had to audition for the host, Patty Stanger. At Caroline's Comedy Club. And I saw show. that episode. It was pretty brutal. It was pretty brutal. I mean, there were some people that were just... the show? Yeah. No. It was that bad. The comics were horrible. They had no idea what was going on. A buddy of mine was on the show. He shows up in shorts, and he, he's talking to the host like he, you know, he's trying to bang her. You know? I'm like, yeah, that's going to get you in the show real quick. Uh, so they threw all these guys out of there, and... You know, they, they come up to me because I thought I was going to have to argue with this woman. I thought that's the only way I'm getting on TV mm-hmm. is I'm just going to have to treat her like some corn-fed heckler and rip up her ass. <laughs> <cash. laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I, just, I, I was like, that's the only way. I'm going to get 15 seconds on this show. But it, Patty was very smart. She, um, she started talking to me, you know, and, and I'm just being my natural self and I'm just cracking off the cup jokes and everybody's laughing and I got a chance to establish my character before I even got into my jokes and, and then when I did my jokes they were very receptive to it so it worked out pretty good and it's like at the end they're like okay um uh, we want you to go to the dinner party that you're going to be a millionaire matchmaker. I'm like, is this one of those deals where you show up and you think you're getting a boat and you go to jail? Is that one of these deals? <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, I, I've, got three, I've got three Yankees tickets. Oh, oh I forgot to change my child support. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, can I trade you the Yankees tickets for that? Um, <laughs> Yankees tickets. Perfect. So, um... We, we did the show, uh, that, that was like one day of taping. It was like 2.30 to, to uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, and, and, the, and, and there was one girl, there was, there was, there was one girl that was uh, kind of up for the uh, prize between three of you. Uh, studs? Well, for lack of a better term, I guess studs. Studs. On yeah, parade. Actually, I finished, I finished better in Millionaire Matchmaker than I did in this <laughs> <laughs> Did, uh, so were you put on a little leash, paraded around, somebody checked your tail, your testicles, your teeth, <laughs> said you're the one? It wasn't a show yeah. like that, right? You could be no, it, it, was, it, was a, it was an extreme process where, um, and some people just aren't cut out for it because you have to, when, when they're taping the show, once they, they change camera angles or anything else and they stop filming, you're not allowed to speak to anybody else. Which is which is fine, I guess, in some situations. But if you're in the middle of a date, it's yeah. a very odd situation for people. And that's why they look stupid, <laughs> All right? because they're, they're, and I'm not being mean to them. They just they, they don't have the time of left for this. So you know, but the, the the woman I eventually went out with, she was re- was the head publisher of Simon Schuster. She did uh, Howard Stern's book. She has her own serious radio show. She had a Fox TV show. She's a pro. She knows exactly how to do it. And I know exactly how to do this. So it didn't phase us, so we were able to literally pick up where we left off. Um, what, 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 you said you, uh, you you had time to develop a character. Are you? Is it staged? Is it propped? Is it? No, oh, it's John. It's, it's John it's McClellan, John. man. Oh, I just, but, you know, I, like as a comic, you've got to get into... <laughs> I'm sorry, I, 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 John, I should introduce you to Darren, who owns the restaurant called Smoky's Bar and Grill around the corner. John, pleasure to meet you. You come to Mason City, you get a good, you get a good meal. Come on over. No, that's, that's a fair question. It is a fair question. question. It's not, it, maybe, maybe character isn't the right word for this, but it, it's time for a show. Sure. Yeah. All right? If you and I are riding in a car, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking to you. All right, and, and, and it doesn't have to be of substance or value. But if I'm in front of a mic or in front of a camera, that's what you have to do. You have to have something to say, something of value, something of substance, something funny or something, whatever it is that 
it doesn't happen anywhere else in the natural world, and that's what separates you from the layman. Yeah. Please, please don't be offended by my question, but it was, you know, uh, and, you, and you hit it no, right on the head. Not. You hit it right on the I'm head. I, I, that's a very legitimate question. But you guys know me. I'm, yeah. you know, I, 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 it's not like off stage. He's a, it's a performer he's a thing. Cuddly, he's a cuddly man, you know? No, he's not. I mean, no, it's you. Just tell your stories off the air that represent that completely wrong. Hey John, I got I got somebody here who's actually a fan of yours, yeah, and uh, okay. yeah, she she remembered she saw a picture of you with me at a show from uh, on Facebook, and she was like, "Oh, you know that guy from Millionaire Matchmaker?" <laughs> and she actually told me that she pretty much knows that entire episode word for word. Wow. So Famous. can you give a I forgot it by now. <laughs> um, I, I will tell you this, and, and not to answer your flattery, first of all. I get recognized probably once every couple of weeks, and the fact that I had that kind of a... They made me look like Bon Jovi in that show. I'm not going to complain about that at all. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, they made me look very good, and I had that kind of effect on people. Whenever it runs, I always get emails and attach messages to Twitter and, and, and whatever else. Um... But it, it, they, they made me look pretty good. And, uh, uh, but the thing is, some of the stuff that happened on that show that was really funny didn't make the show. And I'm going I'm to tell you one of my favorite uh, incidents. We were at the Museum of Sex, which, by the way, is a creepy place to go. And I'm telling you, it, it's real creepy. Yeah. Um, so we get in there, and they have all these books on the first level. And this woman... Judy published a million books. She's like, oh, I did that one, I did that one, I did that one, I did that one. So we get upstairs to the third floor where they have all the leather and the swings, and I'm like, I did that one, I did that one, I did that one, I did that one. And I'm like, why didn't that make it on the That's a jewel, man. <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I think she's got a question for you, actually. You're, you're Absolutely. a fan of John. Hi, John. Hi. Hi, I'm Scarlett. So, did you ever have your croissant in Central Park with her? <laughs> you guys at the end made a deal, and she said, let's do this okay, again. Uh, that, that's also a very good question, and I'm going to answer this right now. Um, that Central Park line was a line that people remember from the show. And those who didn't see the show, what happened was, I asked this woman to meet me at Central Park, at daybreak because I you know it's beautiful and breathtaking and when the show was airing we had a, a viewing party and when that part went off my phone just blew up with bullshit you have never been to Central Park at dawn unless you were walking home or rock so I, I think that's the best way I can answer that question not a good idea to take a date to Central Park at dawn no not that close to dark so we got time for one more. Uh, we got time for one more thing, and then I want to tell people how they can find John and what you're up to next. But uh, worst gig, o- worst gig ever. There you go. Good question. Uh, I uh, I opened for David Lee Raw. Terrible. And uh, yeah, yeah, fifteen hundred people booed me. Wow. Booed me. <laughs> <laughs> because we wanted Dave, you know? You know, it doesn't matter what I said. I could have I could have been giving out free Kit Kat bars <laughs> and they would have booed it. Booed it, booed it. It was shit. What's that? Should have been Kit Kat bars laced with acid. There you go. No, I like it. But the problem is, by the time the acid would have kicked in, Dave would have been on. So it really would have been a loser for me. But, <laughs> uh, so they're booing me, you know? Boo, boo, boo. And, uh, I'm like, all right, listen, folks, here, here's, here's the story. Either you like me or you don't like me. If you don't like me, go to the bar. If you do like me, watch your show. But I got news for you. Dave isn't downstairs going, holy shit, the show's in trouble, guys. We got to rescue it. <laughs> no, Dave's doing Dave's stuff. All right, he doesn't care whether I live or die. All right, so I'm here until I get paid, folks. <laughs> you know, you can. Do, I know how the jokes are going to go, so you don't have to play along. So anyhow, I go on the audience after the show, and, and um, I'm talking to people. They're like, "We thought you were really funny." I'm like, "Where the fuck are you, man?" 
Was that was that the David Lee Roth show and yeah, the Bogarts yeah, yeah. in Cincinnati, yeah. Ohio? And then, <laughs> to top it all off, my ex-wife cuts the article out of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what you're saying? What, what are you going to keep that aside until I'm winning an argument? <laughs> <laughs> So how can people find you, John? Uh, uh, BlueComa.com, B-O-O-Z-E-C-O-M-A, dot com. Um, you can uh, boost Coma comedy page on Twitter, boost Coma on, uh, 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 boost comedy page on, boost Coma on Twitter, uh, boost Coma shots on Instagram, <laughs> and uh, boost Coma. So I, I, I know luck. Comedy look. on YouTube. No luck. No luck. It's a whole lot easier to spell than McClellan. <laughs> No luck with the, the sponsor yet, huh? I thought you were right. <laughs> get a sponsor for the whole boobs coma thing. Maybe a maybe a sponsor would be in order. You said boobs coma. Boobs coma, yeah, boobs. yeah, 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 yeah. Boobs. No, I would think oh, I, I would think like an Irish whiskey, perhaps. Sure. Since you are or you're Scottish, I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, they make a your boobs coma. Yeah. I think the best one would be Hypno Peak. Hypno Peak. Yeah, like hypnotize. Ah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry. That, I mean, I should have wrote that one down first. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, that one back to myself as an edit procedure. You gonna uh, you gonna try and make it back to Central Illinois area um, on your way yeah, to New York? Yeah, Chris and I are in conversations right now. Uh, is that thing we talked about still in play, Chris? Yeah, I, I think that'll be the second weekend of December, but I don't want to say it publicly, although I am right now. Worldwide, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Japan is writing in their calendar right yeah, now. Yeah, Mr. McClellan, I, I am really looking forward to meeting you, feeding you, sitting down, having a conversation with you. Very bright, very funny. Uh, this, this is, this yeah, is and you guys have the same hairstyle. Yes, we do. Right. Yes, yes, we do. As a matter of fact. Do I sell what? Booze. Do you sell booze your establishment? Yes, I... I, I <laughs> He'll be there. He'll be there. Uh, I will be there. We, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good time over there. Food's great. Uh, the atmosphere's great. We, uh, booze and booze are It's good. a half yes. block away. Okay. It's yeah. a half block mm-hmm. from Chris's yeah, place. Listen, I, I, I really enjoy... Uh, Chris and I have known each other a long time. And he and talks I, about uh, you. I've heard him talk about you in the past. And, I, you know, it, that yeah, kind of friendship goes sure. back. Fun. It's a lot of fun. And they love it. It's real diamond, man. I'm going to tell you right now. Yep. Perfect. Yep. So you, you can find John at Booze Coma basically everywhere. B O O Z E C O M A. Yeah, do a Google search for Booze Coma. You're going to find John McClellan's smiling, well, Funny not guy. smiling face, but you're going, to, <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to see John's face basically screaming out of the page at you. And it's well worth it to follow him on Twitter also at Booze Coma. Um, yeah, I'm, I've, I've done enough, uh, you know. Uh, uh, internet stuff on there, and so I I pushed all my mug shots to like the third or fourth. <laughs> <laughs> nice, That's nice, awesome. Well, we'll plan on seeing you in December for sure. Uh, you need to do something about my son and his paranoia about elephants stampeding through the little town uh, that, that we. That kid's, that kid's out of his mind. I love that kid. <laughs> well, he. Else, yeah, he's looking forward to seeing you. And I appreciate you coming on with us tonight, John. It's been a lot of fun. And, no, I appreciate you having me, man. I really do. Listen, Derek, man, you're a funny dude. And, uh, and, and whatever I can do to, to help you out, I'll be happy to help you out. You know I mean? I feel that uh, you guys have been very good to me. So uh, I got nothing but uh, the positive vibes for you, man. Well, I plan on seeing you just in December. 
and I'm going to make sure that we have a crowd here that night, or those two nights, and we'll talk about maybe doing something in uh, coordination with the show, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, Fair Heron or something like that, yeah, Yeah. I I, I don't know, I haven't thought this through yet, John, but... uh. Well, just like it was back in the 80s, (laughs) we're going to have a throwback party. Throwbacks. Yeah. Throwbacks. So, anyway, pleasure to meet you, my friend. Yeah, we appreciate your time, John. See you in December. Safe oh, travel. Yeah, I thought that was nice of Chris not to announce it publicly yeah. on your show. <laughs> I, I, I guess we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah. That, that was an exclusive. Me, second, I guess we'll put this in ink. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Evidently, it sounds <laughs> sounds like a good negotiation. Evidently, Derek and uh, and uh, everyone else is booked this fucking week, and uh, I will just follow <laughs> along. <laughs> I was featured too, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 thought, I assume so. I assume so. <laughs> there you go. All right, John. We're gonna we're gonna let. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank yeah, you yeah, for yeah. being with us, John. Good Perfect. night, man. Perfect. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, that was awesome. That's funny guy. That's funny guy. Yeah, Bring back some memories. Uh, I've known that guy uh, a few years since uh, 1989. Yeah, he's an amazing dude too. He's he's an awesome dude. Well, when, sounds, when, I, when, when, when he first got up, he was he was a uh, assistant manager at, like a Radio Shack or something. Nice, yeah. nice. The guy had his. Shit. He went to Ohio University in Athens, and he majored in like radio, and he ended up fucking managing a Radio Shack, <laughs> which I guess is a success, right? Nice. He's become an amazing Kyle. comic. I, mean, radio, radio I don't know if nice I don't know if the listeners got the gravity of uh, finishing fourth in the San Francisco comedy competition, but especially this last one, be the, the pretty the big deal. And he won the Seattle competition. Uh, yeah, like the year Bradberg won. Yeah, yeah. Also a big 